Okay, this next section is going to do, um, he's going to talk about that Calvinism kind of appeals to the carnal nature. Okay, that's kind of the gist of that. So basically meaning people don't have a little responsibility because God is sovereign, they're going to be saved. People are going to be saved anyway. Um, so there's no need to live right before no anybody. Um, now with that, I'm not sure. I, now, um, actually I just, I think I said before that I didn't know any hyper Calvinists, um, or their teaching, but actually I do know a little bit. Okay. And, um, and it, um, my mind is now going to, uh, Henry Mahan, who is what you would consider hyper -Cal Calvinist. And one reason why too, is because he, he believes that if you are Arminian, that you're not saved, okay? Because you you don't really understand salvation well enough to be saved, okay? So you you got it wrong, so therefore you can't be saved. But if you listen to any of his sermons, you're gonna be challenged to live holy, okay? And the Bible tells us because the thing is, is you 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 you're you're making the assumption that a Calvinist or reformed person doesn't read the Bible, doesn't care about the commands of God. So, because I have a new nature now, the Holy Spirit, okay, so the Holy Spirit has taken my heart of stone and put a heart of flesh, and that heart of flesh makes me more sensitive to the things of God, make me sensitive to, to obey God, and giving me the ability to obey God. He works in us both to will, that means a desire, and to do, that's the ability of his good pleasure, okay? So, and also too, and let's deal with also some other things he's going to be mentioning in this quote too, in this clip, he's, you have, go into all the world and preach the gospel, okay? You have making disciples, this meant the great commission is what we call it, right? God sovereignly ordained for the foolishness of preaching for people is the means of salvation for people to be saved. It's through the gospel, through the preaching of the gospel. Um, and it's also would be able to say not through doo-doo sermons, you know, five points to do this, how to do this, you must do this, those kind of things, but through the preaching of the gospel, through the preaching of the word. A God-centered message. We must know God. We must understand God for Him to be illuminated. Don't eclipse God, but show God to the people. So they that knowledge of God comes to the knowledge of the truth. Not a truth. Because some things are good, is okay. Preach it's a preaching where it's a little bit profitable. Just like exercises, bodily exercise, it profits a little. Some of the preaching, it kind of profits a little. But when you're talking about living holy before God, having the indicatives, it helps you to, it makes the imperatives make more sense. Who am I? Who am I in Christ? Now with this truth of God's word saying, this is who I am, the indicatives. So when the word of God says, be ye holy for I am holy, it happens how? Through the Holy Spirit. It doesn't happen through Eunice. It doesn't happen through my flesh. It happens through the Holy Spirit. Because of the word of God. That's washing me. I'm getting washed with the word. Washing by the re regeneration. Through, through the word. okay, And by the renewing of our mind. Present your bodies. Uh, Romans uh, 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore brethren. By the mercies of God. That ye present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Holy accepted unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's through the word. That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. So then let's listen to this quote here that he's going to say. And see if we can say at the end. He's lying. That's false. That's not true. What in the world? Okay. So let's just listen. The carnal nature of people. You say, why does it appeal to the carnal nature of people? Well, if God has predestined 
all to go to heaven who's going to go to heaven, and God has predestined all to go to hell, then that means that I don't have to soul win. I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to witness anybody. That means that my hands are free. God can't hold me accountable for not sharing Christ and not witnessing. And so it appeals to the carnal nature because a person who believes in Calvinism, well, they don't have to witness. Also, they don't have to live anything. Because a person has to worry about their testimony before the lost and the dying world. Because if God has already predestined them to go to heaven, then my testimony can't change that. So therefore, I don't have to live anything. I don't have to live right before them and try to influence them to Christ because he's going to save them anyway. Calvinism takes all the responsibility away from man and puts it all on God and that's not biblical. God created us as I've already said as free moral agents with the right to choose. Now Calvinism is a movement that was actually okay let's stop there because they're getting ready to get into another another different point here and I want to make some closing kind of comments too. Um, he's talking about people are not accountable you know the thing is is we are accountable to God okay God is holy. God is sovereign. He's our creator. He demands our worship. He demands us to uh, to repent. He he demands everything from us. Why? Because he's worthy. Okay. And also, too, I think another thing too. This reason, especially, yeah, this he's making it carnal all he wants to, right? Because you 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 also it's very man centered. They have to real live right before man. So they can't won't be influenced. They don't want to influence man. The thing is, is I live the way I live by the grace of God because I love God. Okay, that's my focus. My focus is God. Now, secondary. Now, the thing is, is secondary people because of God's heartbeat that He loves people. So therefore, my my love should be for people too. We don't know who's predestined, so you have to treat it as Everybody is though they may be in the kingdom. And I think that's and God set it up that way, I think, for very good reason. We don't know who the elect is. So we have to treat everybody special as though they could be. God could save them. So the day at the day of visitation, that this person won't won't be saying, Man, Eunice was the worst. I if, if that's how Jesus liked his people, I don't want to be in that family, that type of thing. So we need to have a God-centered focus on why we live the way we live, not a man-centered. Now, that's going to be an overflow. Man is going to get some benefits from me living that way and me talking about the Lord and sharing Him because of being obedient, right? It's the obedience to God that I'm doing this, right? Um, because honestly, you know how Ezekiel was preaching to those dry bones? That's what we do too every day. And that's why it's foolishness, because they're dead and they're trespassing sins. The Holy Spirit doesn't quicken them. There's nothing's going to happen to that person. And I think, too, um, yeah, I think that was the end. Of, that's all I wanted. To, that's all I wrote down. So the thing is, is <laughs> at, now we can say this, what he's saying is not true. So, because people I know, John Makoff and all those other guys that I had mentioned before, you listen, or Alex or Begg, you listen to their preaching, they calling us to holiness. The word of God is all of that, calling us to holiness. Be ye holy for I am holy. Even in Romans um, 8, 29, it talks about being conforming to the image of Christ. He's making us more and more like Christ, like Jesus Christ. And we're going to decrease and he's going to increase. So, I'm not quite sure. Um, so, I'm one that believes in predestination. And, uh, and these guys, too, that um, I had mentioned, and they preach that we have to live holy. There are imperatives in the Word of God that God demands. He commands. It's not, an, uh, it's not suggestions. There are commands in God's Word that He wants us to adhere to. Okay? So, 
keep that in mind as you continue to listen to these quotes his man centeredness his arrogance and we're going to get in especially this one coming up we're going to get into a lot of ignorance okay